to the FEDA's monthly discussion forum. As you know, all we all are going through some difficult times and I know that I hope that you all are taking adequate care protection for yourself as well as your near and dear ones and you all are doing well. And thanks a lot for sparing time and joining us for this uh, discussion today. And uh, without wasting much time, let's, I think, uh, get into that uh, topic for the day, which is uh, the international trade. As you all know that trade has been a critically important part of the human experience for now, I'll say thousands of years. And it has contributed to the impressive growth in the economic inclusion and international development. I don't think anybody will have any doubt about that. But uh, traditionally, the international trade has been paper intensive, which comes with its obvious disadvantages. Digitizing the paperwork, if you can do it, would save on operating costs, no printing, no postage. It will reduce the operational risk, no risk of losing out the documents, no risk of some misinterpretation, incorrect typing, etc. And it will improve a lot of carbon footprints. No cutting down paper, the trees, no need for further paper, no postage, no post by year or other things. And the best, it will enable the governments to enhance and accelerate their controls. Just think about everything that's straight through process, automated submission of documents for customs, pre-checks, no tax evasion, one common submission to both exporting and importing custom offices, preventing all this mislabeling, misvaluing, under invoicing, over invoicing. I don't think anybody will have any doubt that it has got immense upside. So many positives coming out of it if you can move towards the digitization. In absolute economic terms, one of the research reports by World Economic Forum and United Nations, they had put a number of something around 7 billion saving annual trading, annual cost, saving of annual costs in, for the trading and increase of exports by almost 250 billion in Asia alone, if we can digitize the trade. And if you have been tracking the recent developments in the G7, the recent ICC research says that digitizing transferable documents in UK alone will generate maybe around 25 billion pound of new economic growth. With these kind of numbers, it is evidently it is an interest of all the parties to make the shift and to make it happen, all parties need to move jointly together to support the shift. And already we know that global bodies like United Nations, Commission of International Trade, UNCTRAL, which we know, ICC, they have all been working on the subject. Many banks have rolled out their own plans and are drawing roadmaps for digitization, sometimes also involving tie-ups with fintechs and to provide seamless services. In our own region, if you look at Singapore has recently done a lot of work on that. They have enacted a model law for e-transfer of title of goods. They have introduced a dedicated trade platform for the purpose, setting up protocol for transfer of electronic documents. And as we know that for such measure to succeed, regular communication, sharing of knowledge, information amongst all the market players is very important. And working in that same direction, today we have organized this meet we have requested Mr. Ryan Sequeira, Head of Global Trade Solutions, Product Management, Transaction Banking from BNP Paribas, APEC division based out of Singapore, who has been involved in all these developments which have been happening in Singapore. He has been in the front row, driving all these things, contributing towards many or most of these efforts. And we all know that BNP Paribas in the region and globally also is one of the key trade finance banks. So I'm very happy to have Mr. Ryan Sequeira today with us. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you, and sir. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. And uh, formally, as a host, I should be introducing Ryan. But uh, since I know Ryan for almost now 20 years, and the relation goes much deeper than the normal formal thing. So I, I would like to venture into that unless I may shell out something which we not, should not be talking on the formal forum. <laughs> so I'll, I'll request uh, Ryan, please, if you can give us a brief introduction about yourself, about your background, how you have been involved and what all you have contributed to the growth of this uh, entire efforts towards digitization of the trade. 
sure sure mrs yeah. sure mrs indwani thank you thank you so much uh, uh, am i audible uh, clear yes yes it sure. is audible so uh, so very good evening to to everyone um, on the call uh, and uh, personally it's a, it's a honor to be invited by mr sindwani uh, to share my thoughts uh, you know and experience uh, especially in the field of digitization of trade uh, and and supply chain so let me try to you know briefly introduce myself my background uh, uh, i i hold a masters in 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 uh, finance from from the uh, from from the well known uh, you know university of mumbai and uh, i continued with uh, my my professional qualifications in a, in an area that i i, I truly am passionate about you know or I mean, if i may say i really love about and that's trade finance so uh, I, I hold today that's the CDCS, that's the Certified Documentary Credit Specialist, uh, CSDG, the Specialist in Demand Guarantees, uh, and, a, and a Certificate in Supply Chain by, uh, you know, by, by, by the London Institute of Banking and Finance and endorsed by uh, the ICC. Now, recently, I was also awarded the, uh, the QTFS or a Diploma for a Qualified Trade Finance uh, Specialist uh, by, by the LIBF. Uh, and uh, this award was because, uh, you know, of holding the, the three most key important technical qualifications as per the LIBF and ICC in the field of trade and supply chain finance, and also a representation uh, of you know of of uh, of technical knowledge uh, and expertise in, in in this particular field. Now coming on to my uh, my experience with 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 BNP and I'm as as Mr. Ashwini said we don't we do know each other from from a long time, so it was a modest start. It was entry level start when I I, I joined BNP. Uh, and uh, I moved up the corporate ladder. Uh, and I personally, I, I've been an advocate and a firm believer you know, that in persistence and hard work. Uh, and obviously with, with the backing and support of, of a very professional management and, and, a, and, and a wonderful HR, uh, I think I am where I am today. So the, the first 15 years of my experience with BNP, I think were the foundation stones to uh, where I am today. Uh, that was in trade operations. You know, I, I always believe that, you know, in trade, if you if you really got to be successful in trade, you got to be a practitioner. Uh, you got to get your hands dirty. Uh, we have a lot of material in the market, but when when you actually do a transaction, when you interpret and apply regulations, that's where you understand it's not very easy to you know to interpret a document, uh, you know, a, a rule of ICC and bring it into a, a, a trade uh, a trade flow. So the first fifteen years were very interesting. Uh, I got the, I, you know I got the unique opportunity to work in branch operations where you, you talk to clients, you know, you receive physical applications, you convey back to clients uh, things that you can't do, you can't do. So that's where your, 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 your traction is, at least with the, the working uh, level at a, for a client starts. Uh, I also got a chance to then move into the middle office. Middle office is like, it's like the trade expertise desk of the bank. So you, you, you need to be well-versed with uh, FEMA regulations, with, 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 ICC, with ICC rules. And... Uh, I then moved on to the back office. In the back office, you actually get into the nitty gritties, the, the, you dirty your hands, you, you, you enter transaction into Swift, you know, you get, uh, you know, uh, neck messages. Do you understand that you've goofed up somewhere? But that's where you learn the whole ropes of a transaction end to end. And I was lucky to get this opportunity in BNP in the first 15 years. As luck may uh, put it, uh, in the year 2008, I got a chance to move uh, into business. And that's again, once again, to, to the wonderful policy that we have in the bank on mobility. They keep giving you opportunities and chances. And uh, I got a chance to move into business as an implementation manager in cash management. So something that I was not doing all this while more in trade. But when I entered cash management implementation, it was a new learning for me. What I, what I garnered with cash management was cash even then was very digital, very advanced. And not much of paperwork, you know, and, and I think it's just matured over, over the period of years. So that's where, for me as a person, I could e compare uh, a physical paper world as rightly, as Ashwini rightly said in trade that I worked for so many years, and then I move into a digital world of cash management implementation. Uh, a good experience of two years in implementation, and then there was a bit of a structural review and change in the bank, and uh, I was then offered the head of trade products uh, and the transaction banking. So I got back to doing something that I really loved. Uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, trade structuring, uh, trade advisory, uh, a, a job that I really loved doing. Now, uh, the turning point in my life was somewhere around 2011, if I may say, when we lost this particular RSV of a, of a big client. And one of the feedback that we got was BNP Paribas doesn't have a document warehousing solution, just one line. 
so uh, my my boss came running in and asked me he says dude what's this document we are using solution yeah so uh, i honestly you know at that point of time i really didn't know and i said okay i said let me check and then i understood okay these these are open account import payments okay and uh, because of the user period the documents are warehouse in the bank and paid on the due date something that we had you know we were doing it very naturally in operations but we never actually spoke about it you know so we said okay we have it okay uh, good now let's market it but then as as it goes you know in bnp uh, we said why don't we try to take a step ahead let's try and do something different and that's where from a trade practitioner from a trade expert i i started you know i ventured into a new a new uh, new phase of my life into innovation and digitization and there i was one day in the morning uh, facing a, a big team of it gurus bas tech guys and hey boss we want now we're going to develop this online platform for import document warehousing so one year effort shini uh, we we it was a good talk uh, you know a functional guy a trade expert talking to a to a to a tech group uh, and we came up with this platform what is product called ever and um, in the first 6 months of of its launch we we had around 10 big names uh, so as they say you know the the proof lies in the eating and that came in the form of the, of big names in the clients uh, we recovered the investment in one year and and the cherry on the pudding is was you know that uh, we also won the 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 what's the the renowned triple asset awards that we we all year the, you know we, this this product won the best electronic banking solution i was like wow uh, now i know what is innovation and digitization in in trade so uh a very good experience in india uh various facets of banking and then i got a chance to uh the opportunity to you know to move to singapore as a head of global trade solutions product management i took the opportunity uh something new uh it helped me broaden my vision my 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 vision and and the and and the and outlook given that now it's going to be 12 countries and not india but yes uh at the base of it uh the the learning from india has always been useful to me uh, in my career so far that's that's wonderful good i didn't try to introduce you <laughs> 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 okay <laughs> i i i all along had that uh, the respect and the think yes there is somebody who is good capable knows his job but uh, i would have never realized that what kind of hard work and that all these qualifications and the certifications which goes behind it obviously it's a regular catching up thing uh, thanks a lot ran and uh, as we say always that uh, every crisis has got a civil, silver lining that losing one particular mandate you made it took it as a challenge and that led to the development of so many products we all know that trade digitization has been there in the offing market has been talking about it since now almost more than two decades but today even today when i look at it i was reading one of the report which said that even today one of the key documents bill of lading there are hardly 0.01 percentage of the documents of the total trade are digitized yet and the effort has not been really moving very fast maybe various reasons maybe the lack of proper technological solutions the conservative approach of all the market players or maybe lack of coordination between different parties involved this is one activity which involves so many parties it's not just today i decide i want to do it and i develop a platform it's not possible everybody else has to work together there has to be interoperability and there has to be a kind of common system common procedures but suddenly i'm seeing something which has been there in the offing but moving at a very slow steady pace has recently come up the priority list everybody is talking about it everybody is excited about it governments are involved g20 is talking about it icc is talking about it g7 has issued a statement what has changed in your opinion what has what has made this push today what has changed in the last few months or few weeks whatever very pertinent question ashwini and uh, and uh, given today's scenario but if if i may put it this way ashwini is that paper is still the, the ashwini's heel uh, you know in trade we love paper okay I, as as a as a trade practitioner for the number of years that i've been in operations today today right now as we speak if you ask me to do and export document checking under the lc uh, ashwini what i'm going to do i'm st- i'm still going to go to the print button print it all get all the documents on my on my table take a pen and i'm going to check each and every word with the export lc that's how it has been you know and that's how we we've grown up you know we love we we, we just been around paper when it, when, it, when it comes to trade and that's and that's more of and that's a habit but 
but if you ask me you know that's not a it's not a lacuna it's just the way trade has been uh paper has been so important uh the title documents have been so important and and that's how uh it's it's been from day one you know even if you see ucp from all these re revisions uh till the ucp has been more on, on paper and the way we will interpret and read this paper but now coming back to today's scenario in, in the pandemic can i do this at home like you know even though the bank has selectively given all of us uh, access to you know work from home uh, can i print all those documents at home uh, you know is it really possible with the work from home social distancing is it really possible now for, for a client to come over to the bank and give me a physical uh, you know loan drawdown application and even if he manages to come uh, and if i'm at home how is the document going to reach me so these are these are the questions that are coming into the to, into the whole uh, uh, into the whole discussion further there are there are certain clients a big names where you know one authorized signatory is in one place another authorized signatory is in another place and sometimes this you know this authorization of of signing a document becomes a bit a bit more difficult so these are issues that are in the market today so it's not so we, so we, may, we may not be able to work the way we were working so the show needs to go on you know it can't stop the answer is that we need to adapt and adopt now to to the scenario where we are in and and the only option is to look at our cousin and our cousin is is cash cash is digital so the, the only option is now to start consuming this these digital modes actually my my personal uh, uh, experience in singapore okay i've been in this area of trade for quite a number of, for quite some time now okay but if you ask me in the last one and a half year i was i'm really surprised with the amount of inquiries that i'm getting from clients in apac uh who want to explore digital solutions to work it's not that they were never interested before okay it's they were interested they were talking but today they're following up today they're keen today that they're, they're asking me uh uh my friend can you can you you know can you reduce the implementation time from say x days to x minus something you know that's the interest that i'm seeing in clients today uh so it's moving in a direction in in that form but before i end this uh, this uh, the answer to this question uh, shini this a this a word of caution and from my personal experience so when we talk about trade you know i don't know for some reason people associate you know digitization of trade with technology and for me technology was always there digitization of trade is not about technology it's about it's about functionality as you rightly said it's about interoperability you can't have digital islands right it's about interoperability and it's about a, it's about a common set of rules for electronic data exchange so these are the underlyings you know for trade in my view the like the the electronic bill of lading as you rightly pointed out right it, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a negotiable document okay it's not exactly uh, uh, you know somebody can write an awesome code and come up with something on that no it's a it's a negotiable document it needs to come in the form of an ebl for for whatever reasons but while we look at this change and while we are all moving in that direction uh, you know ashwini i think one more thing that we also need to keep in mind is that we also need to a bit of a change in our mindsets also now that we need to look at uh, digitizing trade a little bit more also personally rather than you know let's letting the environment decide on our on our behalf that that's very well said i like the comparison with that cash cousin something <laughs> which which we never thought now everything is practically happening in virtual online mode but when Absolutely. it comes to the trade documents that i still insist on the paper that so i totally agree with you that maybe it is the technology was always there but something which was lying there i never wanted to use maybe the sense of inertia that we are always avoid the change till the time it's really we are pushed in that direction and now because of the external circumstances whatever good bad ultimately we are being pushed in that direction so with that the, another important point you mentioned about that that uh, it has to be in an ecosystem needs to change it can't be islands of digitization you can't create those islands are there still even today those islands are there but that's not helping anybody and with that kind of ecosystem how in your opinion the banks or the industry or the market is moving in that direction what is what are specific things are happening what you see sitting over there in the region maybe you have got a better overview of the entire uh, universe What, sure Shani, i so uh, yes so if you if you ask me personally uh, uh, you know ashwini uh, yes there's a lot of action happening there's a lot of action happening on clients and 
uh, you know, banks and regulators, and I think everybody is moving. So this is a topic that you know we can actually talk for a, for a whole day. But I'll try to summarize this into maybe five five categories, you know, of how initiatives are moving. So category one is you know people are upgrading their legacy in uh, you know their legacy systems. Like for banks, you know, you're, you're, you're looking back to your, your processing systems, uh, your front office systems, your back office systems. Clients are looking at their system, you know, how they can consume now more digital trade data. So that's one, that's one category of reviewing the, the preparedness of your internal systems. Number two, the second, the second category is the third party platform provider. I think you, you rightly said there are lots of these third party platforms that come in the market today. On the trade side, you know, there are some well-known names like ELCY, Bolero, S docs uh, on the supply chain side, uh, we have Orbian Prime Revenue. So a lot of these third-party platforms have come in the market, and they're getting a good traction actually with 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 clients. If if I if I may say, and why and why it's not that it's not that banks are not catching up, huh? but banks have a internal regular. You know the way we function, things are a much, are a bit more. They're a bit more careful and cautious, right? We have you know security uh, rules to uh, to follow. We have internal processes. You know. It's a, it's a bit more regulated, you know. When when a bank tries to do a lot of new things on on digital, you know, on digitization side, it, it doesn't apply for these fintech guys, you know. So the, for them, you know, uh, upgrades, enhancements can happen at the, at the drop of a hat. So the fintech guys are have, have come, you know, have played a major, uh, you know, part in this in this particular arena. And and from what I see today, there are a lot of clients who are telling me, uh, you know, you know, tell the bank is that you know. Can you tap with X platform? Because if you don't tap with X platform, then I will not be able to start utilizing my unfunded import LC facilities with you because I'm using X and Y Z plus. So that's that's how the market is not surprising, but that's how it's going on this side of it. Then the third one, Shuni, uh, is about government initiatives. It's some you know, it's, in some quarters people are leveraging on government initiatives, and on some quarters people are participating in government initiatives. So, so the next the next category is government initiatives. Then you have on one side is the ICC, and ICC has been really supportive. If, uh, you know, as we can see, and as you rightly said, uh, we have had COVID-related, uh, you know, uh, uh, guide, guide, you know, guidelines, notes. How do you how do you handle paper documents, and how do you uh, how do you transmit with a swift message? So lots of things have come up last year. Then you have the EUCP, EUR, uh, and uh, EUCPD. So uh, lots of things are coming in, 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 in on the ICC side. And last but not the least, and something that I have also personally seen from my experience is an important topic called co-creation, where the bank with a client or a couple of clients, we identify a problem statement. And then we work together to develop a solution. And once it matures, it's much more easier to move to the larger audience. So in my view, these, these are the five key categories, if you were to ask me in how you know the, the markets and how banks and how the overall uh, ecosystem today is moving, Ashwini. That's very, very well explained. And uh, I'll just touch upon that, uh, the differentiation between the regulated entity and the unregulated entity. I think that that's the, what we used to call in the market, that's a killer combination. <laughs> you, have got, you have got an aggressive guy, and then one guy who's more conservative because he's regulated the good cop, bad cop. If that can work, nothing like that, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, it's a, it's a multi front multi thrown idea, basically. So many people, so many different entities have to work together, right, from the banks to that uh, fintechs, to government initiatives, ICC, and other universal uh, international bodies. So in coming back to your market, your uh, key focus area in Singapore, as I was mentioning in my opening remark also, there's a lot of work, a lot of new initiatives has really taken up. And so many things they have announced, they have rolled out. Would you like to just touch upon what are those specific things? What kind of uh, direction they are taking and how it can help in bringing the entire jigsaw puzzle together? My pleasure, my pleasure, Ashwini. And uh, I'll, I'll dive straight into this answer because you know there's a lot to speak. Uh, but I'll have, to I'll have to sort of compress it to the timeline. But I want to, I want to give justice to the audience. So I'll try my best to also put forward the message so that, so that it's clear. Just in case, you know, actually, anyone uh, needs any additional information, please feel free to reach out to me on, on, on email. So with regard to this question, you know, on, on, on what's happening on, in, the, in the public sector uh, in Singapore. So, so let me just start with uh, one is on the government initiatives. 
the idpms and the edpms road on india is really impressive and noteworthy you know uh, it's digitized two paper intensive documents the bill of entry and and the shipping bill it's, it's it is really impressive and i know a number of banks including bnp who have actually you know who's riding on this bandwagon and we have come up with a number of new new products where this this base of idpms edpms has opened opened up a big a digitization market for banks also you know in the country so uh, that's one good thing that's happened in india and 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 it's and it's a real and it's a real good feeling there now coming to singapore uh, there is this one initiative it's called the network trade platform uh, it uh, which which started around uh, a couple of years back but you know when it comes to the network trade platform ashwin is I, I always prefer to sit around with somebody with 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 a with a with a with a marker and and a whiteboard and draw and explain it you know diagrammatically because there's a lot to speak. But uh, I'll try to I'll try to do justice on the call now. It started with a with an industry discussion uh, Ashwini somewhere around 2017, okay, and they studied the typical a typical trade process flow you know from start to end a typical flow was studied, and they came up with some very interesting observations. number one a typical trade transaction has a has around 25 stakeholders various buyers customers insurers many of them around 25 number two on an average an end to end trade transaction generates around 25 sorry 30 to 40 paper documents and number three 60% to 70% of the information is either regenerated or duplicated now if i were to put this in, in a practitioner's view uh this study for example you have a you have a purchase order just generated and then you go to the bank and you say i, I want to open an import lc the bank's going to open the import lc with some information from your purchase order and some information from your application form so already two data has come now into a third document then the exporter is going to present documents under the lc and he's going to generate his invoice and packing list and other documents based on the information that's already in the lc and so it's going to create a new set of documents information again getting repeated and then you have the custom clearing agents uh, agent, uh, you know process where you want to use the you know certain certain declarations and and supporting invoices and again you want to get some information so this information that is generated finally as you as you said you know it's it's around 7 billion odd paper and a lot of information and that's how it was moving that was the study now now you know now with with singapore's vision of always being a leading hub in trade uh, uh, supply chain and and trade financing they came up with this concept called the network trade platform which is which they call or which is something like a one stop trade info ecosystem it's a platform to connect everybody to connect all stakeholders on a trade uh, on a single platform so what are the three or so what are the four key pillars you know the four key pillars of the network trade platform is very interesting so the first is called data tools and vas and i'll explain a little bit about each you uh, know i'll finish up the listing the first is called data tools and vas the second pillar if i may say is is, is government services the third is something called partners and networks and fourth is called developer zone now i'll tell you how these work how they are interrelated and how they form that one stop trade info in info system uh, uh, vision uh, uh, for singapore the first now data tools and vas I'll, i'll i'll first break it up in on the data tools under data tools you got interesting features like emails dashboards single sign on you know you log into ntp using your car pass or, or sing pass uh, the, the government uh, did a given uh, id and password but one key component which which i really was impressed is the data repository now what is the data repository uh, you know ashwin and, and let me try to explain a bit more in, from practical stance now today we we got something called a file explorer on all our on our laptop just do right you get a file explorer you see folders i can drag and drop uh files between two folders when i copy and paste a file from folder a into folder b i i create two two i create a copy of that file right now in a second scenario you and me are see are working in in a particular organization together all organizations have a have a common common drive we may have a folder called ashwini you have a folder called ryan i can still drag and drop document between our folders but what in a scenario where you are working in organization a and i'm working so you are in fedi and i'm in bnp and i need to send you 
a, a, say a, a insurance copy, a soft copy. The only option for me is to go into my email and to send you the copy of the insurance and that's going to be in your inbox. So the source of the information of, of, the, of the invoice is on the insurer's website, which I have downloaded. And I've sent you an email of a copy. So I only, the, the source information is only lost, the source uh, or you know, the track of the document. And we only created a number of copies of this document in the whole ecosystem. Now, what happens on NTP's data tools, on, on the data repository? Now, if you and I both are on, on NTP, we both go into, we respectively go into the module called partners and network. Okay, and I will search the Ashwini. I get with your UN number and I can send you a handshake. Once you and I do a handshake on the platform, in the data tools module, under my documents, I get a, fo I get a folder named Ashwini and you get a folder named Ryan. Now, what I can do is, based on my other partners, for example, I have another partner, say uh, XYZ Insurance Limited, and they have, they have, they have uh, you know, presented me there, or, or, or I can access from there my insurance certificate. Why are this, uh, uh, this data repository, I can, and if I had to give you the, a copy of the insurance uh, certificate, I can, I, I put into the out folder of Ashwini with me, and that comes into your in folder readily available. Now, the way this has been designed is no copies of documents have been created. The original document is still with the insurer. What you get is now an access to the document. We don't create new documents. The, the source, the traceability, the, the, the audit, the, the originality of the document is still with the person who issued it. It's just when I share that particular document with you, you get access to the document with, with, with NTP's repository. So that's something very interesting because now all of us in a very secure, authenticated way can sh share documents with, with each other because you're using your core pass or your sync pass to log in. The second part is, as I said, data tools and VAS. Now what is VAS is value added services. Now the insurer example that I gave you where I said, you know, I access an insurer and he gives me a certificate. Uh, today, the, the, the value added services module in NTP has got various service providers, you know, insurers, uh, uh, CHA guy, the clearinghouse agent, uh, everybody who participated in a trade have, have actually subscribed to being a service, service providers on NTP. So what happens now is that instead of me going into X platform, Y platform, Z platform to access documents on a trade, I log into NTP, I subscribe to the services from partners and network. And now I can access everything with regards to my trade all on the platform. The second one, the second uh, category is, as I said, is government services. So permits, declarations, and various other government services today, which you may have to log into respective government platforms, or you may have to attach a supporting document, uh, is also now, uh, is now available on NTP. So you go to the government services uh, section, and you can perform most of your government uh, your clearances, permits with regards to trade online. If you need to, if you need to attach the document, once again, you have the data repository, the original document, you attach it there. No new copy is, uh, is created, just the reference and the person can access the document. So then you've got government services also on NTP. The third is partners and networks. So partner and network, as I said, is if you and me have to start working together or we have to start accessing, talking to each other network, we go into this platform, we can do a handshake. So part, partners and networks is only about you and, you know, various counterparties connecting with each other. And the last one, which is the most interesting to me, Ashwini, is called the developer zone. So developer zone, you know, reminds me of a new word, you know, that's, you know, we, we, talk, we talk of digitization. Digitization is actually converting paper to electronic, right? Now, there's another term which I heard here, it's called digi digitalization. Digitalization is now consuming electronic data into your proprietary system because you're, you're reducing manual work and uh, bringing in efficiency, as you rightly pointed out at the, at the introduction. So the developer zone has various IT tools. I, I won't get into that because I'm not an IT guy, but one of that is APIs. So just in case you want to start connecting to the NTP platform to utilize those services and consume that information directly into your proprietary ERP or other systems, this access is also possible. So 
these four key components form the crux of the network trade platform uh, in Singapore. Now, as you can see today, with these four in, 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 in conjunction, you've actually come up with, with, with a near a near near complete uh, trade ecosystem. So this is something that I, I think is very interesting from a Singapore perspective. Oh, thanks a lot. Something quite complicated, but you have explained <laughs> in a lucid manner. And one point which I would like to share here, which I have got based on your uh, discussion, the way you have explained, we always used to debate what is the difference between an electronic di document digitization and digitalization. Now I can see that what we do, scanning a document, that's the first step. That's only creating electronic version, then creating digitized document. And what you mentioned, your digitized document, straight away interacting with your system, that is digitalization. Yeah. So I, I that. That, that used to be always a point of debate. What is the okay. difference within this? Oh, thank, thanks a lot. Uh, Really appreciate that. Now, how this creation of NTP has helped the, as you said, that this is the backbone of the ecosystem, how it has helped. Obviously, once such a thing comes, such a strong platform comes, there will be a lot many other developments in the periphery. Maybe people will be plugins and other things. How is it helping? Has it helped to let to development of some new system, new products, new uh, ideas over there? What is the thing? What is the activity? Hello, I think. I'll... Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah please, sorry, please. I think I, I think it cracked for a minute. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if I understand correctly, I, I think I, I just I think it cracked for a minute. Is you wanted to check on what's what's happening post the NTP, right? What what's the digitization uh, or uh, initiatives uh, based on the underlying NTP? Am I right? That's right. That's right. Okay. So 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 actually, in fact, yes, there have been some real interesting. Uh, uh, initiatives around the NTP uh, in Singapore. Okay, so I, I'll, I'll break it up into two parts. Some public ones on the public side and something on the private side. Okay, so on the on the public side of the NTP, the, the, so you have something called the Network Trade Platform Project Office, NTTP or NT, NTTPPO. Now, this particular entity, along with nine participating banks that included BNP, I won't get into the, the, the criteria of the participating banks investment. I won't get into that now. Okay, so uh, these these two groups, along with a with a software vendor called We Cargo Cloud, developed an online trade platform called Camel One. A very interesting experience I had, you know, because I, I participated in it from day one, you know, representing BNP. So we we nine banks, along with the vendor, along with the NTP project office representatives, met every week for, for, for nearly eight months. And we together developed a bank agnostic trade platform called Camel One. You know, it was interesting, why? Because uh, nine banks, all leading banks, each one had our own proprietary system. Now we have got to you know, shed all that information and agree together to build one platform. And that one platform has to be built in such a way that when the client sends an application either to my our bank or to any other bank, we should be able to consume that like the way we consume it in our proprietary platform. So challenging, but very interesting. So we developed this uh, platform called Camel One. It's a bank agnostic platform. Now what's the benefit for the client? So today, if the client's working with bank A or bank B or bank C, he's gonna have a, you know, a token, credentials, password for, for each bank. He's got to remember different passwords and different credentials, right? Now the same client, if he subscribes, now I'm going back to the NTP, if he subscribes via the value added services, VAS, if he subscribes via the VAS to Camel One, he gets access to Camel One. Now the same client, when he logs into the, say the import LC module, he gets a drop down of all the nine banks and he can select the bank from whom he wants to issue his import LC rather than maintaining three and four passwords and three and four logins because no client just has one bank, uh, that they normally deal. So that's one interesting initiative that happened is a camel one. Uh, once again, the underlying document information traces back to the NTP document document repository module. So the, the, the originality of documents, the, 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 the audit trail and the other functions remains all unchanged. Everything else on top is just moving with, with information. So that's camel one. The second, uh, Real interesting uh, initiative happened late last year, and now we are pretty matured. Is the electronic bank guarantee program? 
so BNP, that's myself, and then a couple of other banks for the uh, initial uh, guys who gave this feedback to Singapore Customs on how we could use the network trade platform initiative to digitize bank guarantees. Now, bank guarantees, as we all know, it's a physical uh, activity. You, you print the bank guarantee, it has to be signed, and then it's delivered. A standard process, once the bank guarantee is issued by the bank, you know, until it's given to the customs, and when if the goods have to be released and whatever, it's uh, you know, four to five days, the processing activity in the whole thing. So what we, you know, we, we brainstormed on the EBG and it was BNP and other three banks and we really spent a lot of time is uh, custom said, okay, we, we pick up one bank guarantee type. It's the uh, custom bond guarantee. Now we all know that when it comes to guarantees and it comes to public sector guarantees, you can't negotiate text. Text is uh, full and final, right? You have to issue it or you don't issue it. So the good thing is that we, ha we had a fixed text of Singapore customs and we agree that the participating banks to the electronic bank guarantee program will sign an agreement with Singapore customs where we have a lot of indemnities. And in the next year, we have a standard custom bond guarantee. And wherever you have you know, the amount or you have the expiry date or claim or whatever, those fields are left blank and A, B, C filled up in those particular columns. And, and we have all agreed and sign and executed with Singapore Customs. So what happens now? Today, when a client gives me a request to issue a guarantee in favor of Singapore Customs, I don't issue it on paper. We have a simple Excel file. The A in the, the, a in, uh, the bank guarantee, if that represents the reference of the, uh, that refer, uh, represents the reference of the bank, I put the bank reference, the amount, and it's around eight fields. And we transmit this simple Excel file using the NTP document exchange repository once again, post a handshake with Singapore Customs to Singapore Customs. So once they receive this file, it's considered to be issued a guarantee by the bank in favor of Singapore Customs. So now what takes four days post issuance, Ashwini now takes to us. So it started now with, with custom guarantees and now they're slowly increasing it to a few other uh, uh, sectors and, and departments in the government. So that's another interesting initiative that we had on the electronic bank guarantee uh, portion for uh, for for the for Singapore Customs. Now moving away to the private sector. Now, as I as I had always said, right, I was personally always impressed with this NTB document exchange folder thing. But but as you know, that if I have to transfer a folder to you, just a folder to folder, I can't write a message. Then I can't I can't I can't write the idea, Ashwini. You know, please find attach here with the documents. Because in, in a folder to folder, it's just the fold, just it's just the document that moves. So. Uh, what I came up here with 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 a, with, with a new product solution, that which we which we named as Document Exchange Connect, where the client can now send full set of instructions to the bank, while attaching or accessing his documents from the NTP document folder. So the document folder that's there, and we are giving a face to the client now to add instructions. So that's one, and obviously the way the market is going today, uh, people are you know, are traveling, people at home. So we, we ensured that this new state of the art product that we, that we developed in the bank uh, is, is it's accessed via a digital token. So the token is on your iPhone, on an iPad, so device mobility, a full trace and track uh, feature. So you exactly know from initiation or draft till processing of the bank, you can see real time the status of the, how the, uh, the document and transaction is moving. It's very intuitive because you know what I try to do is bring in a lot of colors and symbols. So rather than reading something, you just see a red dot, you know, oh yeah, there's a problem in my transaction here. And last but not the least, we kept we kept the core feature of NTP as a document repository. So with this, we went to the market and very accepted by a lot of now clients in Singapore. Uh, so that's for me, once it sells and once you have clients for me, I said, once again, the proof lies in the pudding. And uh, and the cherry was uh, last month when we received once again the, the, you know, the asset triple star, uh, the editor's choice award for, for document uh, exchange connect. So yes, uh, innovations are happening, public, private, and it's really interesting uh, using NTP as a base, uh, Ashwini. That, that's interesting to know a live example, how maybe a good base can help the growth and development of so many new things. and. You mentioned about that uh, document exchange uh, connect 
Connected. being awarded the best payment and collection platform by the AAA. I, I yeah. wanted to I wanted to tell about that, but you have told <laughs> okay. me. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm sure by now you would have got used to getting these kind of awards almost every month or every second month. I think we keep hearing about that either in the okay. trade part or otherwise you have been getting this. So the and EBG also is one quite interesting solution. And when I look at uh, parallelly in Indian market, I think we are on the right track, maybe, but still some distance away, especially on the bank guarantees, the first hurdle which we are talking about, we have already got that first step which we have achieved is about uh, electronically payment of the stamp duty and other things, Yeah, which yeah. obviously becomes the next part as well to look at it. So in this particular, um, also keeping an eye on that uh, clock as well, I know you also have got time for you. It's already two and a half hours ahead of us. Won't like to hold you back. And at the same time, we have got some queries, which maybe some of these things I'll take it up. I'll, I have got some Q and A people have already typed in. So one thing I would like to just ask you on that uh, before we get into the Q and A, there are not many interesting developments happening in the trade, trade digitization, as we all know, you have already mentioned, and I'm sure there will be all these new innovations come with their own challenges and the path as it appears every time, every step you take, you see a new challenge, you see a new problem, you overcome and then you move on to the next one. So what in your views would be the points one has to be mindful to consider in this journey, if I may say, or the possible hurdles or things which you can come across and how you are gearing up or preparing yourself to take care of address those issues. So far, everything looks pretty good, at least at, as you said, in a sort of island for the country, for that level you have come. The next step comes how to connect it to the other things. I know maybe if you would like to talk about, there have been some kind of business uh, route between some countries, I think Singapore, Hong Kong connect and those kind of things have been there but it's not one on one country. It has to be across yeah. the globe. So what are the hurdles you see? What are the challenges which you feel are likely to come and what's the way road ahead? How is it looking like to you? So, so Ashwin, I think this is a, a simple answer. It's, 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 a, you know, it's a real life situation for all of us. You know, something new will actually address a problem, but will surely add in something new for us to a challenge to, to consider, right? So that's going to be with digitization. Uh, for, now, for example, if you see today, you know that the the, the 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 a few frauds and and what's happening on on on, on the cash side, right? On e-commerce side, there have been a few fraud, but that doesn't mean uh, you know it doesn't mean that the the whole system is bad, right? It's these are things that I think we have to we have, we have to accept, we have to acknowledge, we have to adapt, uh, and we have to upgrade our skills. So technically, what I feel it is today we need to also be a bit tech savvy, you know, uh, if we have to actually consume these electronic services. Now on the trade side, on trade digitization, I, uh, it, it's 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 a start. It's a it's a new journey, but uh, but if you ask me, uh, we we are going to face a few uh, challenges. But the positives, let me assure you, far 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 uh, uh, will you know will will outplay uh, the, the negatives. At least uh, you know in the trade on the trade digitization, Ashwini. And, and as I talk to you right now, uh, I, I've got three to four new government projects which have already come up in in Singapore. As I talk to you. Uh, we are reviewing them on, on how we want to uh, start working with them. Interesting one. So personally, it's a very exact, it's exciting future for, uh, ahead, at least on a trade, trade and supply and you know, digitization front, uh, Ashwini. That, that's great. One thing which is coming to my mind whenever we are talking about trade digitization, always the big terms like blockchain and distributed ledger technology, all these things come into play. But the way you have explained, it didn't figure in. I don't. It seemed like maybe you are using all the set traditional technologies, traditional processes, or is there some role being played by the blockchain or the DLT also in this? Yes, yes. Okay, so blockchain, you know, if you ask me, is like the new kid on the block. It, it, it's, it's being spoken about uh, quite a bit and it's very interesting. Last now, few days because of that cryptocurrency, it has become yeah, a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, Okay, yeah. <laughs> but okay, on the trade side, I think it's a bit more uh, organized. But I'll tell you, so on the blockchain, if you, if I were to put it, uh, and the way that the discussion has been going, again, I'll, I'll try to break it up into public and uh, private. So 
the key features of a blockchain transaction if, if you ask me or, or of, of of a trade transaction at least on the digital side is this you know we need to we need to have efficiency uh, auditability traceability transparency and security and i think all these five key points are there in a blockchain transaction now we have a initiative which again bnp was a part of in hong kong it's called e trade connect now that's a blockchain based uh, platform that they have designed ntp chose not to be blockchain uh, hkma chose to be blockchain so e trade connect uh, you know is a pure open is in a pure open account space not into uh, you know traditional trade products like uh, lcs and guarantees no it's in the pure open account space you have the buyers you have the sellers you have the bank and a few, and, and a couple of service providers all on their respective nodes now e trade connect allows buyers and sellers now it's within hong kong but i have asked you know i i sent an i sent an email uh, some time back to someone in hong kong to ask you know if we could uh, have one counterparty out of hong kong and uh, i was actually discussing with the uh, bnp india is then we use idpms edpms and try to come up with some new product for clients but okay uh, that discussion will happen i think and hopefully i you know we should be able to open up to one counterparty out now coming back to blockchain uh, e trade connect as a platform in hong kong as i said focuses pure on open account trade now on this platform the buyer and the seller can you know create exchange and confirm invoices and purchase order on the blockchain in real time uh they can they can share selective information among them also on the chain as well as seek uh, pre shipment financing or post shipment financing all on the blockchain so look at it this way actually is you have an invoice okay and on the blockchain you can select it for financing with with any bank say for example you choose bank a the client chooses bank a he is banking with three banks with bank a once bank a finances that invoice on the blockchain the client can't get that finance with bank b or bank c so tbml and other sort of uh, you know discussion points are automatically nullified when it comes to such sort of platform because at one time one person can act on it and once he acts on it it's closed you cannot duplicate it or you know or come up with anything funny around that so that's how etc is moving uh, in in hong kong on the private side i think we are we are hearing a lot about this of this initiative called contour a couple of years back it was called voltron now i was involved from scratch when in voltron for bnp singapore and if you today if you google google out and say you know, you know first fully digitized trade transaction in singapore you're going to get the full article of bnp paribas first transaction on a blockchain i'll give you my experience sir ashwini the you know to put it in simple layman language for, for all the users here in the real world today when the applicant comes to the bank to issue an import lc the beneficiary is bank or the advising bank and the beneficiary don't know so the 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 lc the lc is with with bnp okay when the lc is with bnp and i am processing it the applicant has no clue at what level of stage of this transaction is doing you know he say he calls sir jaldi karo make it fast yeah 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 it's in my back office my front office alana falana so that's how it's going when we when we issue the lc and we we release it by swift and it goes to the advising bank i have lost visibility of that transaction now now whether the advising bank takes one day two days three days to advise i have no control neither the applicant has control we, the, what happens is the beneficiary can follow up with this bank okay <clears throat> and when the beneficiary receives the lc once again me as an issuing bank the applicant will not have clear visibility what's happening then when the lc when the when the beneficiary presents documents under the lc to the advising bank the issuing bank won't have a clue technically till it comes to my counter and when it comes to my counter i've got five days and to do my action so technique so at one point of time just one one party or maybe two parties know what's happening now on the blockchain which i personally saw this is how it works we are all on the on even as a node and we can see the transaction in this entirety i may not be able to act when the transaction is in your in or your node or your queue but i know so for example look at it this way we have four of us we have an applicant we have an issuing bank we have an advising bank we have a beneficiary take like a simple scenario on a blockchain when the when the when the applicant is filling up the form i can see here uh, at, at my queue lc application being initiated the beneficiary can see that 
the advising bank can see that. When it when he when he releases that application, it's in my queue. Everybody knows on the on the on, in 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 the in the chain that the LC application is now with the issuing bank. So I take one day, I take two days, I take three days. Everybody can see it. When I release the LC on the chain, there is no MP700. So we don't go via Swift on a blockchain. The LC is released on the chain to the advising bank. So the applicant can see issuing bank ne apna kaam kar diya. So I'm out, but I know it's pending now with the advising bank. So we all know that advising bank is pending advice. So he completes his sanction check, what are our checks, and he releases the LC to the beneficiary. The, when, so it's a, normally it's an e-presentation under EUCP. So you also have a node with the uh, with the third party like a Bolero or an S-Docs because you need the EBL to get consumed into the node. These guys have the e, EBL uh, you know, capability. So these guys will generate the EBL, it comes into the node of the beneficiary. And then he's able to club up all the digital documents at his end and on the node submit to the uh, advising bank. Now I, as the issuing bank, know, boss, I have to get ready. This submission is going to come to me anytime, digitally. Hardly the, 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 you know, the advising bank clicks, okay, documents are in my queue. So it's so efficient at that point, at least from, from what we did at the test, is what would take maybe six or seven or maybe 10 or 15 days happen in less than three to four days. And we did a virtually live transaction. You know, we did it, it was an iron ore. We had real clients, we took the real risk. So. If I have to put it into a, into a, into a realistic real man perspective, this is how uh, blockchain works in, a, in 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 the trade space. That's that's looking too futuristic, at least for somebody like me who has been working in that old style, all paper based and everything, but uh, looking quite quite exciting. So, uh, Ryan, I still remember when we were discussing about this talk, you said that this is something which can go on for days and days, but we had to restrict it within one hour. We are already close to our final wrapping up time. But I've got a few questions which uh, I would like to just request you to briefly touch upon. One point which is coming, somebody has asked about is that, what about the something to do with that unicitral, the model law which United Nations has come out with? How is that taking shape and how is that going to, I know that people, countries will have to accept or adopt yeah. that you need to change your legal system but like something like icc that yes i follow this law anything you'd like to comment upon that how is it helping so, in the digitization unicetral by itself is a good uh, is a good law but it, as you rightly said it needs to be adopted by country singapore has recently adopted as you said uh, i yeah. think uh, uh, uk is in the process of completing on this understand three, yeah. three countries have adopted so far have uk or g7 has made a commitment that we'll be doing it yeah, but in the meantime, in the meantime, uh, till everybody is not on the same, as I said, again, even we're getting to digital islands, till everybody is not on the same uh, uh, wavelength of, of accepting these documents, it's still going to end up being paper in one side and going to be digital on the other side. So you're still going to end up uh, receiving an EBL in one country and converting that into paper into another country. So you'll still defeat at some point of time the, uh, the, the purpose of... Uh, of bringing a, a full-fledged digitization under laws like this. And that's why Ashwini, you have something called the rule book, uh, where, where uh, under a platform provider like Bolero or SDocs, all the parties to a transaction sign a common understanding. And that's called a rule book. And we all work within the rule book. But once again, it's a digital island because if one client is on SDocs and one is on Bolero, then you, 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 know, you don't have an inter, interrelated rule book. So while things are moving in, I think uh, what we need is finally everyone to come on the same uh, on the same page. Right. Just one thing, though, you have mentioned in your discussion also that you are getting lot many queries and requests from the client how we can move on. Somebody is talking about that. Uh, besides some of these, you can say that ahead of the curve or at the front end of the curve, in general, mid level or maybe that medium small enterprise. What is the acceptance level for these kind of initiatives and the things about? when you are talking about totally digitized and thing. What is, what is your experience in the so, APEC region? Okay, so if you ask me this question, I think the, the, the initial inertia is now breaking. And I'll tell you one thing you know, from experience. Okay? If, you go to, if you go to a normal organization, you, you, if you see the 
cash guys and the trade guys the trade are little bit, bit more experienced in the little you know the a little long the long experience guys the cash are the, the the younger breed who like to be who be digital so at some point of time you know also the way organizations would like to will, will look on trade gets a little bit more uh, complicated because it's about training people onto a new technology but this said but this said uh, let me let me tell you is i'm surprised on the number of queries and the number of interactions and sessions that we have been having here uh, in singapore uh, on the ntp they have been full houses uh, ashwini and people are in really keen because today uh, they see the benefit but at the same time it also loses a bit of steam because you still need a physical presentation in some cases but yes it's it's really moving in because uh, people are talking about it and 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 then you have a lot of uh, you know publication with regards to the way ntp would work a lot of banks now marketing their services so i think from what it was and what is today it, it's a big drastic change okay that that's interesting i have got some more questions also over there but i believe that most of the things you have already covered something like that uh, in when you are explaining the various aspects of that something which is very interesting somebody has mentioned about i'll just share here you said that uh, in the blockchain no risk of duplicate financing that that's that's a key advantage of the blockchain that once it's been financed that document is sealed that particular invoice is sealed nobody can use it that if somebody uses the physical version of that and goes to another bank because today we are living the digital and physical both are working parallelly i have got it refinanced from the digital side in the digitized world i also take a physical copy of that these these then, are the <laughs> then you are not done your kyc well you don't touch the client yeah <laughs> yes, that, that, that's right <laughs> that, that, that's yeah. right so, yeah so that i'm sure there will be lot many new things also coming into it as we move on that we'll be learning new technologies new processes and new checks and controls but uh, as if i can summarize what we have understood over there lot many changes are happening especially on the government side we are seeing good initiative good uh, progress happening good support coming in private was always there fintech is also there something which probably other stakeholders as you mentioned there are kind of 25 counterparties involved in any trade yeah. transaction there are so many other stakeholders they are also slowly coming in joining in especially when you have talked about partner and network module of your ntp obviously they are all in line the only thing is that everything has to converge towards one thing and the legal part is still something which is taking time probably to move in because globally it has to be one thing but icc has been through their digitized digitization initiatives and other things standardized for protocols which they are trying to come out that is we are looking forward to that we are following that keenly and i think that's going to be something quite uh, helpful which will expedite the entire thing and if i look at india i think you mentioned about idpms edpms we have got ice gate then we have got portal yeah. system so i think that slowly we are getting all that ingredients are there now we have to put it together and prepare that final product that's the thing connectivity and other things along with the legal support which has to come in so with that uh, i'll just uh, on behalf of adai on behalf of all our participants all the members member banks over there and people who have been there would like to convey my sincere thanks appreciation for your time for your support for explaining it in such a simplistic lucid manner if i may say something it is very easy to get stuck with that uh, acronyms and big data big numbers but at the end of it people just get lost on listening to it looks impressive but after that when you start thinking about it kya sikha hai kuch yaad nahi but sahi bol rahe the way you have explained this will stay back this will stay back to people thank you sir thank you so much thank, thanks a lot ryan thank you very much my pleasure sir entirely my pleasure thank you so much good night to everyone sir good night thank you and Bye. thanks everybody for joining us for this and look forward to you having you again for our next monthly meet- meetings please uh, wait for the announcements which we do it at our website at regular intervals thank you ryan thank thanks. you sir stay safe sir take care bye 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 thank you bye bye